Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. I'm attracted to you. I think I know why. Why? It's one of these reasons coming up. Oh, you mean on this episode why yes. you're attracted to certain people and not others? Bingo. That's next. So, Ronnie, I have about a 35-minute commute back and forth to work. And though I listen to the radio for music and stuff, yep. um, my, my brain is always working. And so it got me to thinking, what is it about one person that you find attractive and maybe another person that you don't find so attractive? What is that? Why are you attracted to certain people? It's definitely because sometimes it just clicks. True. So I thought, let's find something on this topic and talk about it. When we fall for someone, it's tough to stop gushing about our new crushes, good looks, sense of humor, and those undeniable love sparks. Boy, I love the love sparks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But why is it that we're just naturally attracted to some people and not others? Yep. Sure, love is mysterious, but... In some ways, attraction is not all that mysterious at all. Uh, science actually has an explanation for why we are attracted to certain people and why we don't give others the time of day. Okay, so uh, up first on our list, and this I, I, I could not agree with more. Yeah. Proximity plays a role in who you're attracted to. For instance, have you ever noticed, sound like Andy Rooney, you ever notice? You ever notice? That it's not uncommon to see co-stars from your favorite TV series or movie dating in real life. Rachel McAdams and Ryan Gosling, for instance, dated on and off for three years off screen after starring together in The Notebook. Or maybe you remember that Jennifer Garner and Ben Affleck started dating the year after the release of Daredevil back in 2003. Why does this seem to be a pattern? Well, mere exposure to someone repeatedly increases the likelihood we will be attracted to them. This is backed up by 50 years worth of scientific research that has found, get this, proximity is one of the most powerful indicators of attraction. We simply are drawn to the people we see frequently, which explains why celebrity co-stars end up getting together, hooking up, you know? Yep, I got that. Due to how closely they work with one another on a regular basis. Now, I will tell you this, uh, and this was not this was kind of proximity, but in a little bit different way. I had a girlfriend who lived out I-5 in Pocket. Oh, yeah? That's a that's a pretty good trip that's from here. That's a 40-minute drive, roughly. Conservatively. Yes. And she was perfectly fine. She was great. She had a nice job. She worked at a bank. She made good money. Uh, she was attractive. She had her own car. She had a stable family. But you know what? It was that drive. It's just, it was too far. Geographically undesirable. Geographically, oh. And then the best part was, uh, shortly after we kind of went our separate ways, a buddy of mine started dating her, which was cool. I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, and he drove a Jeep. And... As he was at her house one night, his Jeep, somebody cut the top of his Jeep and took everything out of the inside. The seats, the stereo, uh, they took everything. Because I-5 in Pocket, it's kind of, it's one of those areas in... It's a little dicey. It's a little dicey out there. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah, proximity. Yeah. All right. This next one. People can be attracted to those who look healthy and fertile. Ooh, I'm not sure what a fertile person looks like. Well, but, I could speak to this, but go on. <laughs> so uh, whether we realize it or not, we are biologically attracted to people who look healthy and who look like they can reproduce. Heterosexual men are typically attracted to younger women who appear to be of childbearing age and physical appearance. Um, this can explain why you see photos of women in the 1800s wearing bustles to overemphasize their healthy, mm. childbearing uh. hips in order to attract men. Yeah. Uh, additional research suggests that people are also attracted to those who just plain look healthy. So that's why we've always done so well. Our physiques and oh, yeah. muscular, you know. Yeah. It's yeah. us. Yeah. To this day, Ronnie. Oh, you know, yeah. Desirable. We're killing it. Um, oh, yeah. Knocking it out of the park. <laughs> well, he, you know... 
I tell you what, I'll save that to the end of the episode. Okay. Let's right. go to the next one. All right. All right. The next one on our list is our environment teaches us who we should view as attractive. And this is a dangerous thing. This is where body shaming comes in, etc., etc. Beyond physical features, um, media plays a role in helping us learn what to view as attractive. For instance, some heterosexual people may seek out partners who share attributes that remind them of their opposite sex parent because that is what they've always grown up knowing. Interesting. Heterosexual women have been socialized to seek primarily older men Thank who you. tend to be more financially established right. and can take care of the woman and the subsequent family. These are just a couple of examples of how we can learn who or what is attractive. There is no single way that this learning occurs, but everyone is influenced by it. You know, and have you have you noticed that if you have if you're out with a group of guys and four guys sitting with you go, Wow, look at that woman over there, all of a sudden that woman is like, huh. More attractive. Yes, I do like that. Mm -hmm. Whereas without those four guys pointing you in that direction, you might just look overlook that person. So it seems like if everybody else thinks that's good, that must be good. Yeah. Yeah, we could go to bars together. Because I think, we, <laughs> to me, that it's, it's not going to... And I'll get into that. Hold on. Keep watching the dang show. That's true. We do have slightly different Hang tastes. Hang on to it. Yep. Okay, this next one. Personality traits might impact who you're attracted to. Uh, research has shown that people who are kind are seen as more attractive. Uh, they've actually registered clinical psychologists uh, to do consulting for this. In a 2007 study, participants were asked to rate photos of strangers for attractiveness. They were then asked to evaluate the same photos, but this time some of the photos had personality descriptions. Uh, hmm. Essentially, the study found that the photos with positive descriptions received the highest ratings for attractiveness suggesting that the certain personality traits do play a factor in judging attractiveness. Kindness. Kindness. Honesty. Not being a, a witch. Not being a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> are we helping or are we hurting? <laughs> Keep watching. Hormones play a role in attraction. You bet. One 2016 study found that men with high levels of testosterone Burr. The primary male sex Arr. hormone Arr. may be more attracted to women with more feminine faces, oh. which they described as meaning big eyes, uh -huh. high eyebrows, and a smaller jaw. But that's the, uh, not the only way hormones play an attraction. In a study of 238, ow, college, <laughs> sorry, college women, something just snapped uh, in, the, in a journal. Um, uh, colleagues found that women are attracted to certain men depending on where they are in their cycle. And I don't mean Yamaha. In mid-cycle, women tended to prefer flings with caddish men. And on average, fertile women were more interested in short-term relationships with men who came across as cocky. Wow. In comparison, at other points in their cycle, they gravitated towards longer-term relationships with, as I just said, kinder, more conscientious, deferential types who have stereotypically good father material. Wow, interesting. Uh, now, this one, we've all, everybody's always been told opposites attract. Well, it's possible that opposites actually don't attract. Uh, despite the fact that 80% of us believe in the idea that opposites do attract, it might be the case that we're instead attracted to those more similar to us. Uh, to understand how the similarity might impact a person who chooses to be in a relationship, a renowned American psychologist developed a method known as the phantom stranger technique. Okay, I want to hear more. <laughs> the procedure begins with participants completing a questionnaire about their attitudes on a variety of topics, such as the use of nuclear weapons. Next, they take part in a personal perception phase where they evaluate a person based on their responses to the same questionnaire. By manipulating the degree of similarity between a person and a phantom stranger, they were able to conclude that participants reported feeling more attracted to people who held similar attitudes 
In fact, the greater the degree of similarity, the greater the degree of attraction. Hmm. And I will tell you, Vicky and I, we are two peas in a pod. We agree our views on things are aligned perfectly. Um, and I think a lot of that, and I noticed it immediately with her, her family's views were very similar to mine. Um, and, and for me, a lot of that is you don't want to get involved with somebody whose ideologies are 180 degrees different because you don't want to have a constant fight 365 days a year. Well, I.e. a Democrat and Republican. Yeah. I, well, and Vicky and I, are we have differing parties, although we are both very uh, middle-of-the-road party-ish. So, M-O-R. Yes, mm-hmm. right. So we're, you know, we're very similar. And politically, we vote differently sometimes. Uh, but... It's not enough to cause any rifts. Yeah. Um, getting back to people can be attracted to those who look healthy and fertile. Um, I think that it's ingrained in us from birth and uh, mother-child relationship, the first one, that um, we, in our mind, think of reproducing. Ultimately, I mean, girls grow up and they want to be mommies and have babies and dads want to be dad or guys want to be dads. And it's just it's it's human nature. Right. But it goes one step further. And I'll tell you why. Um, I have a very and, and, and I know why this is. But I in my whole dating life and marriage life, you have a type. I do. And I and, and this is going in depth here. I prefer blondes and I love blue eyes and I don't mean to come across wrong but my feeling on this is if it's good enough for Hitler it's good enough for you (laughs) great Ronnie thanks for the setup appreciate how do I follow that I think that I Blue eyes and blonde hair is really appealing to me because it just seems so pure and clean. It's in every Beach Boy song. So, are you going to comment on that? <laughs> <laughs> you want to leave a comment below on that? Because I just can't wait to get back to you on your comments on this episode. Uh, it's just the way that I am. In my whole dating life, I've gone out with like three brunettes. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and all the rest have been blondes uh, but see here's here's the thing my wife now not a real blonde <laughs> ruh <Ruh-roh>. so <laughs> what does that say for my theory <laughs> eh, you know I don't know but she, she's been blonde as long as I've ever known her I yeah. know I know so. and, and it's cost me a fortune over the years <laughs> <laughs> That's the lesson to learn right there. Marry a natural blonde. <laughs> All right, I think that does it for this episode, I think Ronnie. So too. All right, we better get out of here before I say anything more. Uh, it, we hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please give it a like. I and sure did. If I did, yeah. If you liked it, uh, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell. When you click on the bell, there you get notifications each time a new show comes out. And uh, we try to give you a new show on Monday, Wednesday. And Friday. Mm-hmm. So be sure and check that out. Tempo. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. We'll see you on the next Men Are So Smart. Okay. Hey, Ronnie. Not so fast that time, were you? <laughs> here, here I am. Where did you go? Uh, I just... I, I, how long ago? Where, where I, am I right now? Ronnie, I don't know. <laughs> I, I have enough trouble keeping up with my own life. It's because you're going potty. Yes, well, I have potty mouth. I do, you do. Uh, you know what you are? I'll tell you what you are. You want to know what you are? What am I? Loose cannon. Tiny bit. 
little bit. A little bit. See there, we already have an Easter egg for the end of this one. <laughs> All right. And <clears throat> a sip of coffee would be great right about now. <laughs>